With the release of The Secrets of the North, the new Venator bow has been released and it has already shaken up the range training meta. Being able to hit up to three times, this new bow can unleash some serious DPS. What is up, scapers? My name is Fancy and today I decided to try out the Venator bow on my peer. I went to several different training spots and recorded my hourly XP, my loot, and of course, the cost to use this bow. I am going to start with a basic overview, but I have chapters set up on this video so you can skip around if you want to. But I'd rather you didn't because, you know, the algorithm is watching. The Venator Bow is a new bow which has a passive effect, allowing it to hit up to three times. The way it works is that you fire a shot at your enemy like usual, but then if there's another enemy within two tiles, that shot can then bounce or ricochet to that new enemy. From there, it can either ricochet back to the original target or to a new third enemy, provided they are in range. The main shot will work just like any other bow, but each of the ricochets can hit up to 66% rounded down of that damage. And yes, that means the ricochets are affected by things like the Salve Amulet or the Slayer Helm. This passive effect is powered by Ancient Essence, which is dropped very commonly and in high quantities by the new Phantom Muspa boss. You only end up using one Ancient Essence per shot fired, regardless if the shot ricochets or not, and on Rapid with 1500 shots per hour, the cost to use this bow is roughly 188k per hour. This may seem high, but it's about half the cost of using the blowpipe each hour, and I also do expect the cost to drop fairly significantly, as the essence is incredibly common and isn't used nearly as much or as frequently as the Zora's scales. Seriously, one of the Venator shards, you need 5 to make this bow, one of the shards can be converted into 50,000 ancient essence. So, you get a lot of it. Moving on, the Venator bow has an accuracy of plus 90, which is actually so insane for a bow. This is the same accuracy as a rune crossbow, and crossbows are kind of known for being that slow but accurate range weapon. This bow also has an attack speed of 5, so it is 1 tick faster than the rune crossbow, and if you put it on rapid, it will then be a 4 tick weapon, so it will be as fast as your trusty dragon scimitar. One of the things that makes this bow very unique is the fact that it also has a ranged strength bonus built into the bow. The bow comes with plus 25 ranged strength before you even equip arrows. That's so massive, I really can't get over it. Okay, I could honestly go on forever, so let's just get into it. The first spot that I wanted to try was Temple Spiders. These are a great option for peers specifically, as they have a relatively low requirement to access, they have a decent drop table, and well, there's a lot of them. By the way, you can see my gear and inventory, but just to be very clear, I am using the absolute max range bonus for a peer, with the exception that I am using amethyst arrows instead of dragon arrows. I just felt like this would be a bit more realistic, because dragon arrows are like 2k each right now, that's, that's too much. I am also going to be using the Eagle Eye Prayer the entire time, as well as a Divine Ranging Potion. This way I have the absolute highest DPS possible for my build, and I can use those slightly higher numbers as clickbait. <laughs> One last thing to mention is that if you don't have all this gear, that's completely okay. You really don't need it. This bow has such high accuracy, and when combined with the relatively low defense of most of the monsters that'll be in this video, the impact will be fairly minimal, so just use whatever gear you have. I recommend replacing range bonus with prayer bonus. Use your prayers. So the temple spiders were kind of like a learning experience for me, I was very AFK with them, so if you paid a bit more attention and kept tagging the spiders to ensure that you could ricochet more, you can probably improve your XP per hour by around 10 or 20k, so rather significant in all honesty. I am also going to be turning off the loot beams that I have on because they're just ridiculous. I'm not going to be picking up any drops either. Some mobs drop a lot of items and some drop none, so I figured the data would be more consistent if I just didn't pick up anything at all. I think that's fair, right? So after 15 minutes, which is going to be the time that I will be spending in each spot, we gained 41.4k experience and we were getting just about 119k XP per hour. Again, if you put it more effort in, I think this could be much closer to 130 or even 140k per hour, but that is still really good. 
When I got 99 range on this account, I was getting around 90k range experience per hour at the Nightmare Zone using a blowpipe, which is far more expensive. As for loot, we ended up killing 142 temple spiders for an estimated 165k GP. That's actually a lot more money than I expected. The cost of the charges was around 44k and around 25k for the amethyst arrows. If we extrapolate this data and pretend I did an hour here, I would profit around 380k minus the cost of potions. Overall, even if you were to break even, that's still a great training method that's already better than basically everything outside of chinning. Moving right along, I decided to try out two common spots for peers with low requirements. The crabs. I started with Ammonite crabs as they're my usual go-to training spot, and after a bit of world hopping, I realized that we had a problem. This new bow kills crabs so fast, you end up spending a huge amount of time just waiting for crabs to respawn, and anytime you're not firing your bow, you're losing XP. In the end, I ended up getting just shy of 87k XP per hour, and I'm not even going to discuss the loot because it's not even worth picking up. I then decided to try out sand crabs. Although they have less HP than ammonites, there are 4 crabs instead of 3, and I was kind of hoping this would allow more crabs to be alive at any given time, therefore I'm not firing less often, and therefore I'm getting more XP. Instead, we ended up with a little bit less XP per hour at 84k, because we were just killing them far too quickly and had just way too much downtime. One thing to consider though, as you don't need to prey against crabs, if you have an alt, you can use that to round up crabs and it'll probably double your XP per hour. But that will of course be a lot more effort, and I didn't want to include alts in this video, so just something to keep in mind. Next up we have Ankus. These are normally a decent barrage slayer task, and I figured there were enough of them that it could be a great option. Ankus also have a very low requirement to access, and they would be impacted by the salve amulet, so I had pretty high hopes for this spot. Unfortunately, I ended up incredibly disappointed. For some reason, the Ankus in the catacombs have the lowest HP of any variety of Ankus, despite being one of the highest levels. For reference, the level 86 Anku has 70 HP. The level 95 Anku that I was killing only have 60 HP, and the level 97 Ankus, only two levels higher, have 100 HP. Their low HP combined with a long respawn time once again provided a significant amount of downtime, so I didn't even bother trying to spot with a salve amulet. That being said, we did get our best result yet at 131,000 XP per hour and about 70k worth of loot. This once again helps mitigate the cost of the bow substantially, but I do think temple spiders are still a much better option. At this point, I figured that I was already in the catacombs, so why not work our way up the slayer ladder starting at Bloodveld. Requiring only 50 slayer, this is a moderately low requirement for most accounts, and Bloodvelds are honestly just giant damage sponges, so I was very excited to see what kind of rates we can get. On top of this, Bloodvelds are also a larger NPC, being 2x2 two two tiles big, so I wanted to better understand how the ricochet of the bow works. It turns out that the ricochet will normally work based on a monster's central tile, however if the monster is an even size, like 2x2 two two in this case, it will work based off of the northeast tile. So in order for it to bounce from one Bloodveld to another, they have to be touching each other. With that out of the way, we ended up this attempt just shy of 180,000 experience per hour. Not only that, but they drop decent loot as well. We got 142,000 GP worth of loot, however if you remove the ashes from this amount, it's only 100k, but still, that'll help pay for the cost of the bow. Next up, we have jellies, which require 52 slayer to kill. These are an excellent bursting task, and also a great source of hard clue scrolls. Something else I haven't mentioned is that when you're in the catacombs, you have a chance at totem pieces as well as ancient shards, which are like a hidden bonus. Not only that, but this task made me realize how much more relaxed this method is than bursting. Yes, bursting or barraging will absolutely get you more kills faster, but this is just like so much more laid back. And while I do like to play efficiently sometimes, that's not all the time. Once again, I marked all their spawns if you want to try this out and want to try to optimize a better spot to stand in based on their spawns and the ricochet potential, but I'm not smart enough for all that, so I'm going to leave it to you. 
When we finished with jellies, we gained about 44,000 experience in those 15 minutes, meaning we are getting just shy of 178,000 XP per hour. That's like actually so insane. On top of this, we killed 75 jellies for about 83,000 GP worth of loot. Once again, this means you can basically break even with drops, and because you're not barraging them, you can be on the normal spellbook giving you access to high alchemy. This means you don't need to bank or leave any loot on the ground, which is something that I hate doing when bursting. Honestly, this is such an incredible spot for anyone looking to train range. It's a fairly low requirement and basically free if you're picking up the loot, and you also get the clue scrolls that'll help break up the training. So if you actually do the clues on your way to 99, you can probably make some serious profit. Next up, I headed on over to Dust Devils and I got lucky that a spot opened up just as I arrived. This is the next step up in the Slayer ladder, requiring 65 Slayer and face protection to kill. But I think they have a slightly better drop table than Jellies, so I'm very hopeful. As I mentioned earlier, I have to let you all know when I'm changing my setup, and in this instance I am replacing my Robin Hood hat for a face mask, so I lose 8 range bonus, but I do think that should be basically negligible. Similar to Jellies, these are an amazing Slayer task to burst or barrage or just use chins, but let's see how the bow does. In the end, I ended up getting just over 175,000 experience per hour, so actually less experience than the Jellies. I don't think me not having the Robin Hood hat played a noticeable factor, instead I think the minor XP loss was due to two factors. The first is that the Dust Devils have less HP than the Jellies, so they're dying ever so slightly faster, and the second is that those spawns are slightly more spread out, and what ends up happening is the shots aren't ricocheting to untagged NPCs as often, so I have to manually tag the Dust Devils that are just wandering around, and when I'm tagging those loose dust levels, it's less likely that that arrow will then ricochet to another NPC or back to my original grouping that I have here. That being said, we got significantly more loot from this 15 minute session, and another advantage is a large portion of this is cash. I would recommend bringing a ring of wealth here to save you a little bit of time picking a blue, and overall, I think this is probably the best option by far, as you will be profiting a few hundred thousand GP every hour, as long as you have the Slayer level to kill them. Oh, and of course I marked all the spawns, but I don't think I'll keep doing that going forward, but here you go. Continuing up the Slayer ladder, I decided to give Necreals a try. Requiring 80 Slayer, these bad boys are normally even more profitable than Dust Devils, and with over 200 HP each, they had a lot of potential. There was just one major problem. Necreals can spawn a small NPC called a Death Spawn, which can deal up to 2 damage at a time. And while that may not sound like much, it really adds up, especially when you have multiple attacking you at once. On top of that, these are very weird monsters. Despite constantly attacking you, the game doesn't really think you're being attacked. You can literally log out while they're attacking you. And what this means to normal humans, like me and you, is that not only do they hit through prayer, it also means you can't use auto-retaliate against them, so you need to pay even more attention to constantly focus down these death spawns. I thought I could actually give this a shot by bringing along a blowpipe to help sustain my health, but unfortunately that simply didn't work out and I ran out of food. That being said, if you have a main to draw aggro, this can be a fantastic spot, but once again, I'm not going to get into the alt metas in this video. I ended up leaving after running out of food, getting just under 150,000 XP per hour. The next step up the Slayer ladder is the ever nostalgic Abyssal Demons, requiring 85 Slayer to kill. These monsters teleport you around constantly, making them a very annoying task normally, but I think this is actually going to be my new way to kill these for all of my Slayer tasks going forward. I know barraging them is significantly more XP per hour, but this is just such a relaxed and chill method, I am actually so happy I gave this a shot. Not only that, but I got my first ever whip drop, which I literally screamed at when I got it, but then I realized it's only like 1 mil, which was kind of sad. This is also the only piece of loot I actually picked up, because come on, it's a whip! By the way, I do want to state that I was actually on an Abyssal Demon task, but because I'm not wearing a Slayer helmet, it doesn't impact my XP per hour here. In the end, we ended up gaining 37.5 thousand experience, meaning we were just over 143k XP per hour. And I think that's actually great considering how annoying these are normally to slay. I ended up killing 59 of these demons, and if you take the whip and ashes out of the equation, we made around 120k, 
which means you can pretty much break even, and then the whips are a nice bonus. I actually liked this spot so much I stuck around for another 10 minutes, just casually killing them. <laughs> that is pretty much it for Slayer Monsters, but before I left, I wanted to try out a few more common Slayer tasks. First off, Greater Demons. These simply don't work. These are 3x3 monsters, and the Ricochet can only travel 2 tiles. The Ricochet only looks at the northeast tile for every large monster like this, that has an odd number, 3x3, 5x5, whatever. The Ricochet only looks at the northeast tile for monsters like this, so it will never bounce from one 3x3 monster to another. That being said, lesser demons are smaller! There's really not that much to them, but we were getting just over 147,000 experience per hour, and about 84k worth of loot, but the majority of that was from Ashes, so you're likely going to be losing money here, so I don't really recommend this unless you're on task and want to range. Now, the moment most of you are waiting for. I went to the tunnels on Ape Atoll, that's the Monkey Madness Island, as it is one of the best chinning spots for peers, so I wanted to see how it could compare with the Venator Bow. Another thing that I want to mention is that I will be doing two sessions here, one with the Necklace of Anguish and one with the Salve Amulet EI. For anyone who isn't aware, when you chin here, you can wear a Salve Ami, but the bonus accuracy and damage from the Salve only applies to the NPC that you clicked on, not the eight surrounding NPCs that are hit by the chin's explosion. I wanted to test if the ricochets act in the same manner, and this is where I learned, they do not. The ricochet damage is based off the damage from the original hit, so if your first hit benefits from salve, your second and third hits will as well, and that's amazing. I started by using the necklace of anguish to get a baseline, and we were getting around 172,000 XP per hour. Although I think this is slightly lower than what I could have done if I had done a better job setting up the skeletal monkeys in the first place. To keep the test fair, I actually hopped worlds, so I once again had to set the monkeys up when I did the test with my Salve Amulet EI, and when we finished, we were hovering right around 186,000 XP per hour. That is so incredible for a peer, I can't even get over it. One thing that you do need to remember though, is that these monkeys do not have any drops, so you are going to end up spending quite a bit of money for the extra little bit of experience. Completely unrelated, but I spooned a pet squirrel, and I know you're jealous. Just showing it off. Finally, we are going to visit the Nightmare Zone. I am going to be using Overloads instead of Divine Ranging Potions, but I will still be using Eagle Eye the entire time. I am going to do three different customizable hard rumbles to see which boss list works the best, and to start, I'm going to be using the Trap Soul, Count Draenor, the Kendall, the Moss Guardian, and the Tree Spirit. These are the lowest defense options a pure can fight that are also not a 3x3 monster. After the 15 minutes was up, we ended up averaging about 182,000 XP per hour, which is the second highest hourly XP rate we've seen, and although there is no direct loot, you do get points which allow you to buy herb boxes to recoup some of the cost. The next trial I did was with the Trap Soul, Count Draenor, the Kendall, and the Moss Guardian, as well as Dad. I added in Dad despite being a 3x3, because he gives a 10% bonus XP rate, and although he is 3x3, not all the other NPCs are, so shots can still bounce off of him to other NPCs. In the end, it was just not worth it, with our XP rate ending at 152,000 XP per hour. Finally, I wanted to make one more change, and that was replacing Dad with the Headless Beast. This is another 3x3 mob, but it is considered an undead, so Salve Amulet would work, and you don't need to hide in the corner giving a different layout for potential bounces. I didn't have this quest done, so that was kind of weird, but the quest ended up being kind of fun, so I didn't mind it. Despite a relatively strong start, we ended up around 164k XP per hour, so the 3x3 mobs just aren't worth it to include unless you want to pay attention the entire time. Now, for my overall thoughts. Dust Devils are just one of the best range training spots out there right now, and I really think this is just such a chill way to handle the Slayer tasks when you don't want to burst or barrage. You can get very good XP while also profiting a fairly significant amount. Jellies and Bloodvelds are another great options if you don't quite have the Slayer level. Abyssal Demons are completely changed for me. I will be using this bow for every single Abyssal Demons task because it is just so, so, so much easier than having to stack up the Abyssals for a barraging. This is like a complete game changer for me, and the chance at a whip is a nice bonus. I don't think I would personally go to MM Tunnels, but Nightmare Zone is an option if you don't care about money. Of course, everything in this video will change based on your gear and stats. If you have Void, Masori, a Slayer Task, etc., the rates will be very different, but it should scale roughly the same. That's going to be it for this video, so if you stuck around, just know that I love and appreciate you. 
please like and comment and subscribe and 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 like and comment